Those who know me well know three very important things about me. One, I write love letters to my favorite foods before eating them. Two, I made up my own secret handshake and taught it to my friends and family and insist that they use it so that I can spot imposters. And three, I like my things to look like things. I like mouses that look like mice. I like fish bowls that look like TVs. I like retro consoles that look like real retro consoles. So why wouldn't I love a computer that looks like an old Nintendo? Seriously, I'm asking you, why wouldn't I? You can't answer, can you? No, you can't, because there is no reason that I wouldn't. I would like it, actually. Ioneo has been freaking killing it with their mini PCs lately. At first, they came out with the AMO1, which was my favorite mini PC. I did a review of it, and recently I turned it into a, my dedicated DOS emulation PC. Did you see that video? That was a fun one. Definitely check that out if you're into DOS stuff. I loved that PC because of the retro style. It's the guts of a modern computer in a case that makes it feel like a, an old PC. That's the same reason that I love all my NES and Game Boy DMG colored retro handhelds. Even the more powerful ones, I like them to look like old tech. I'm just an old man, really. I enjoy things I remember. So when I saw this, I knew that I had to have it. I didn't care if it was good or bad. I, I didn't care what the specs were. I just knew that I needed it more than life and root beer itself. So I reached out to Ioneo and I begged them to send me one to review. And uh, to my astonishment, they, they did. And, and now I'm, I'm going to do that. Ineo's products have always had a nice unboxing experience. There's a nice greeting inside with some word papers underneath. And then inside we get the PC and a box with some USB and power connection adapters for different regions. There's a box with a, oh, an HDMI cord for you to add to your HDMI cord bucket. And another box with a USB-C cord, which goes with the power adapter that we get in this other box. This is a 100 watt adapter. Real gamers, no gamers. It's, it's written on the adapter, ju just in case you ever forget. The most obvious and obviously best thing about this thing is the retro vibes. They, they use the shape and the aesthetics of the NES as an inspiration for lots of the design choices. And it's a wonderful blend of old and new, in my opinion, which is correct. Beyond the general aesthetics, there are two cool things that add even more pizzazz to the AMO2. The first is this little secret. Check this out. You push this little red button over here and look at that. The little door opens and it shows you some sneaky little hidden USB holes where you can plug USB controllers or hard drives or fans to keep you cool while you're lighting up the charts in Fortnite. Uh, does Fortnite have charts? And then we have this screen on top. It's a, it's a little four inch touch screen display that can display a clock and a calendar or swipe it over and to show your PC status like uh, temperature and TDP. There's even a button here where you can change the TDP performance right here on the screen. Apparently they're going to add some more functions like screensavers or custom images, which I'm looking forward to, but for now it's just this. So we have that button on top that opens the secret door, and then in there we have one USB-C hole, two USB-A holes, and a headphone hole, and there's a power button there. Around back we have two more USB-A holes, and a DisplayPort hole, HDMI hole, two Ethernet holes, and a power plug hole, and a bit of ventilation on the top and on the back and uh, underneath. In here we have a Ryzen 7 7840HS processor with integrated Radeon 780M graphics. There are several different models available. Mine here has 32 gigabytes of dual channel DDDDR5 SODIMM RAM clocked at 5600 mega things per second and a one terabyte NVMe SSD. We also have integrated Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, it's 538 grams, and it's too big to fit in your pocket, but that that's okay because it's it's a computer. It's, it's not a, I mean, you shouldn't, what? The system on here is a pretty uneventful version of Windows 11 Home, which is good. No, no added bloatware or viruses or any other nasties. It has a nice desktop wallpaper, so that's got to be worth 
something. We do get one special custom piece of software though. It's called Aya Space. This is a universal piece of software that Ioneo makes that gives you extra control over the features of your Ioneo device. It does have a gaming front end built in. So, you know, if you want to use this PC more like a game console, this might appeal to you. Here you can go in and change the TDP and the fan profile, change the settings for the display screen. And there is a quick menu that you can open up through the taskbar or pressing a uh, key combo. And this is sort of like the quick settings on the Steam Deck. This stuff is made for handheld PCs, but it's nice that we get it here on a desktop PC as well. And if you want the benchmarks, that, that means that you're a boring nerd. But that's okay, because so am I. <laughs> so in Cinebench R23, which tests raw CPU horsepower, we got a multi-core score of 13,710 and a single core score of 1,299. That is a seriously impressive Cinebench score for a mini PC. In 3D Mark Time Spy, which tests 3D graphics and gaming potential, we got a score of 3,388, which is, again, really freaking impressive for a mini PC. And in Crystal Disk Mark, I got these results, which, again, are pretty good. The benchmark performance tells me that this thing will handle a lot of stuff. You should have no issue doing desktop stuff like graphic design or Photoshop or even some light video editing should be no problem. I didn't test that stuff stuff because I'm here to play with this thing and, and I want to play games. So let's play some games. Here I am in the Witcher 3, 1080p, balanced FSR, medium settings, and I got 70 FPS on average. So I'm in my New Game Plus playthrough and I just got to Skellige and I needed to go find the king and, and he was was dead. Before I proceeded with the story, I decided to do a quick side quest to go and find a stolen family sword. I follow the lead, stop by a sawmill to clear out some monsters, and then I find the bandits who stole the sword, but th then I learned that they took it to their hideout. So I go over there, I help this guy with his broken leg on the way, I clear out the bandit hideout, and then I find out that the sword isn't here, it's down at the coast, getting ready to send off to be sold. So I head down there to their camp at the coast, and I kill a lot of them, and I get the sword, and then I bring it back, and I find the guy, and I return the sword and complete the quest. That was supposed to be a quick side quest, and it took like an hour. That's the thing about this game. If you let yourself get sidetracked, you'll end up spending ages following little quests here and there. And that's not a bad thing at all. I love that. And then I fired up Ghost Recon Breakpoint. This is 1080p, medium settings, and I got 54 FPS on average. I always love the Ghost Recon series. I played the original games on the PC back in the day, and I love the Advanced Warfighter series on the Xbox 360. I also played quite a bit of Wildlands, and at Breakpoint, I know most people didn't like it, but apparently it's improved a lot since launch. Most of the issues that people had with it have been addressed, apparently. This is one of the benefits of being a patient gamer. Playing the games after they've been out for a while and all patched up and then you buy it on sale with all the DLC bundled in. You get the best experience of the game that way. In my top 10 games on the Steam Deck video, I showed PAL World running, but I was pretty negative about it and I got called out. A few people in the comments were like, what the heck? And they were kind of right. I had only played the game for like 10 minutes and I didn't really give it a chance and I kind of was negative for no good reason. And I thought I should actually play the game for a bit before I start sh throwing shade. And you know what? I had fun. First of all, it, it runs okay. I'm on the medium settings, 1080p, and there were a few areas of slowdown, but it was playable and enjoyable. I did the survival crafting thing. You know, I collected supplies and built some tools, and then I was looking for a spot to, for a base, and I came across this thing, and I didn't want to mess with him. I built a tiny house. It, it's not really my kind of game, but I can see the appeal, I guess. And it plays great on the Ioneo AMO2 mini PC, so it's got that going for it. This is called Metal Hellsinger, and this is my first time playing it. At first, I thought it was supposed to be like a, a standard kind of hardcore shooter, you know, like a Doom clone. <laughs> Man, I haven't used that term in a while. But this game has a unique twist on it. it. It's half boomer shooter, but half like rhythm game. You need to time your attacks to the beat. 
uh, really early on in the game, I realized my timing was off and that's because my display capture introduces latency. However, I kind of got the hang of it and was able to compensate a bit and I was having a blast. This is such a, a perfect combination of gameplay styles, moving and shooting, but also trying to time your, your shots and attacks to the beat. Honestly, I can't wait to install this on my main PC and max out the settings and play it with the music freaking pumping. And since this is a retro style mini PC, I knew I'd get my butt kicked in the comments if I didn't do some emulation. I used my Kinhank Hyperspin Games Drive that I reviewed recently. I love this drive. It's 12 terabytes freaking packed with retro games, all set up and ready to rock. I played some Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U, and that was running amazing. There was a little bit of stuttering at the start, as there always is, but that clears up quick, and it was smooth sailing after that. And I tried some PS3, Soul Calibur 5, and that was running amazing too. And even Xbox 360 is running great. Here's Red Dead Redemption, which is a hard game to run and it's it's running there are some hiccups here and there but this is totally playable obviously if you got into upscaling and graphical enhancements you'd probably hit a wall real quick and you'll still find some games that don't run well just because of emulation issues but i'm super impressed at how well the amo2 is doing if you wanted this as a dedicated emulation PC, you know, to pair it with like an emulation drive, like this hyperspin drive, that would be an awesome setup because everything runs and it looks the part. And finally, uh, it's time for the mini PC report card. Mini, mini PC report card. card. For the form factor, this is definitely an A+. I absolutely love the look of this thing. For an old man like me, having a mini PC that looks like an old Nintendo is uh, so dang cool. It would look amazing on your desk or under your TV, anywhere really. In terms of I.O. features, I'm giving it an A. It has all the holes you need. However, it would get an A plus if it had two more USB-A holes around back and maybe one additional USB-C hole around back so that you could have one for power and one for USB-C stuff. For the noise, I'm going to give this a B. It's pretty quiet most of the time. However, when things get cooking, it does get audible. However, however, the actual sound of the fan isn't annoying and high pitched. It, it just kind of sounds like a like a desk fan or something. For the system, this is an A+. The stock Windows 11 build is great with no bloatware, no viruses or any bullcrap. And the ISPA software is okay. It's not great, but it's entirely optional. So not, nothing much to complain about here. And in terms of performance, this is an A. A really solid general performance. Great benchmark results. Great for watching movies, browsing, photo editing. Even video editing would be good on here because we have 32 gigabytes of RAM to work with. For the gaming, I'm really impressed at the kinds of games this thing can play. So I'm giving it an A. This 7840HS is performing great. It's not going to beat a desktop gaming PC, but at this size, it's hard to top this kind of performance, to be honest. And for the value, I, I guess it depends on which version that you get. The top end option, which is what I have here with 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD is 700 USDs. So I'm going to give the value a B plus. I think the slightly premium price is justified a lot more here than on many other mini PCs. And the overall grade is going to be an A. This thing is awesome, and it deserves to be considered if you're thinking of getting a higher-end mini PC. There's a bit of room to improve, but you compromise very little here, and it's just such a cool and interesting device. I want this product to do well because I want Ioneo to keep making these cool, interesting mini PCs that they've been making. I love it. Actually, believe it or not, this is my new personal favorite mini PC. This is the one that I'm going to be using from now on until something replaces it. I love how it looks. I love it on my desk. I love how it works. And I love you for watching this video and clicking the thumbs up button and subscribing for more videos like this and for watching more of my videos when you're done here and for being you because you're great. And that's it from me. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.